In this video, we're going to use labels to create a dynamic, non-linear navigation. Let's go. So I've made a few small additions to the file we've been using. Um, I've added this div for .nav here, okay? And that's just an empty div where we're gonna put a bunch of dots, those pink little circles. And then in our CSS, I have a .nav class, and then I have a dot class, which is gonna make those pink circles for us, okay? Um, this file should pretty much run as we left it. The next buttons go to the next, the previous buttons reverse, all right? Pretty cool, so let's get a dot navigation going here. And the first thing we're gonna do is add some labels to our timeline, all right? A label allows us to mark a specific point in time in our timeline. And we can add a label with the add method as we learned in GSAP3 Express. And I'm just gonna keep it really simple and put this as a B0 label. In front of the B1 box coming in, we're gonna do a dot add and we'll do B1. And to save me some typing, we'll just copy that. And for B2, we'll do a paste, we'll make it B2. And then for B3, so in front of all the entrance animations, we're putting a little marker that's named, okay? And we're calling this thing a label. So I now have a bunch of labels in my timeline, which means that I can navigate to these labels. So as soon as this file loads up, I could say something like uh, tl.play and let me just put in B3. That means we're gonna jump to the B3 label as soon as this thing runs. So let's see what happens. We'll run it, and I think we'll see it go boom, right to B3. There's a cool method, tween2. So instead of doing play, if I do tween2, what's gonna happen is we're gonna scrub the playhead all the way through the timeline automatically to the B3 label. Now you might be like, oh, where's B3? Well, the label is before B3 comes in, all right? If I wanna tween from one label to another, I can do a tween from two. So I could do, let's go from B3 to, I don't know, B0, we'll go backwards, all right? And what's interesting about this tween two is that it's going to scrub over those add pauses, all right? So we just started basically right before the three would have come in, and we go all the way back to, where are you? There we go. The beginning where the B0 label is added, all right? So definitely check out tween2 and tween from2. They're actually pretty cool. But now that we have these labels in place, what I wanna do is create a circle for each label. So let's get rid of this. And so the next question is, how do we access these labels? And the answer is we access labels through the label object. And this is kind of new in GSAP3. Let me just do a let labels, that's my own little variable there, equal tl.labels. In GSAP3, timelines have a labels object. Let's log that out with this and let's run. And looking in our console, we're going to see that, oh, we get an object and it has properties that are the same as the labels that I created, and their values are the actual times that those labels are inserted, okay? So the B2 label is at a time of 1.2. If I ever wanna dynamically figure that out, I could say, hey, let's log out labels.b2, and what that's gonna do is give me the time value of the B2 label. So I get 1.2 right down here. Okay, so that's pretty neat. However, for ages, GSAP had a get labels array method which returned all of the label objects inside of an array and I found it much easier to loop through. So after a little hemming and hawing, um, Greensock created that method for me, all right, that I could use and you can use too, of course. And so here's the code for get labels array. And basically you just tell it what timeline you're using and it will kick back an array. So let's change my code around a little bit. So I'm gonna say labels is no longer equal to the labels object, but I'm going to get labels array and I'm gonna pass in my timeline. And then now let me just log out the labels array like this. So we'll hit run. And what are we gonna get? Here we get something that looks like an array because it is an array. So it's an array of objects, all right? So the first object has a name property and a time property. 
the second object has a name property which is b1 and the time is 0 0.6 and what we're going to do now is loop through this array and we're going to pull the name out of each one of these name objects okay so let me clear out my console and what we're going to do is loop through that array that we get um, we can get rid of this console.log even and we're gonna just do a little magic paste here okay and we're gonna do a for each loop on that labels array and we're gonna log out item dot name all right for each item in the array let's grab the name so let's run this and hopefully we get a list of b0 b1 b2 b3 very cool all right so to save you from watching me type and make a bunch of typos we're gonna do a little bit more magic copy and pasting today so for every item in the array, we're going to create a dot, all right, which is going to be a div, and then we're going to give it a class. And let me hold on one second. I'll go through this line by line. Ba boom. All right. So we're going to create a div. We're going to reference it as dot. We're going to give it a class of dot so that my CSS gets applied. And we're going to give it a data label attribute based on the item's name, which we know that we can get as we just saw it right there. And then we're gonna append each dot to the DOM. So let's run, let's actually close the console and let's run this. And what do we get? I hope we get four dots. Nice, they were added to the DOM here. For every label in that array, we get a new dot. Awesome. Now that I know my dots work, we'll do another little magic copy and paste and we're gonna add a click event listener now, and we're gonna just log out this items, everyone we click, their data label, okay? So let's just first run this, and let's take a little look in the DOM actually, because I wanna show you that if I right click, and let's do an inspection. Here are the four dots that were added, and you'll see they get this data label attribute, okay? So basically on click, we're going to be figuring out what each dot label is. We already have the click handler in there. Let's open up the console and make it not so big. We'll clear it out, and then when I click this dot, we get B0. We click this dot, we get B3. This one is B2. So pretty cool, we know it works. Now that we know what this code does what we're going to do to make all of this work is we're going to tell our timeline to play whatever that happens to be okay so let's run where are we going to do let's get rid of all this stuff let's just look at our very glorious demonstration here and let's press this button and what's going to happen voila we get two we press this one we get zero with the intro animation because remember we put the label before the elements come in so every time i click this button we're going to play that label that brings in number one my next button does work my previous button does work my three button does work so now you can see we've built a pretty cool dynamic non-linear navigation so hopefully this lesson showed you exactly how powerful labels are and a few different ways that you can use them. Anyways, thanks so much for watching. If you want more free videos like this, subscribe to the channel and follow me on Twitter. For access to all my premium courses and exclusive demos, join me in my creative coding club. Details below.